Alright guys, so we finally have some Vega Frontier Edition benchmarks that I can talk about. And it's because someone finally got their hands on a card and did some 3D Mark Fire Strike benchmarks. Now before anyone asks, yes this was set on the gaming mode in the drivers, so it's not like we're getting diminished performance on that front. But it was tested with a 4790K and we did see some throttling, but in most cases the core clock stayed between 1500 MHz and 1600 MHz. So almost at the peak uh, core clock for this card. Now here's the benchmarks, I'm going to put them up on the screen for you guys. And as you can see, we're getting graphic scores of around about 21 to 22,000, which is right in line with NVIDIA's GTX 1080. Uh, for performance and this matches us with Adored TV's prediction that we'll see Big Vega hitting GTX 1080 performance and maybe in some titles like Vulcan titles it might just beat the GTX 1080. Now to check that this was actually hitting GTX 1080 performance I myself conducted a Fire Strike benchmark with my EVGA GTX 1080 for the win and my i7 7700K and I got a graphic score of 22,781, which is pretty much in the same territory as Vega Frontier was. So based off what we've seen here, it could mean a number of things. It could mean that RX Vega, which is the gaming version of Vega, could see a performance increase over this card of around about 10 to 15 percent, depending on the drivers, the cooler that's attached to it, and any additional increases in clocks or memory speeds from AMD. And also the TDP of this particular card was 300 watts I believe, maybe 375, which isn't horrible but it's certainly not great considering that with a lower TDP um, you're gonna get obviously less heat and you're also gonna get lower power draw. Um, but if you're running something like a 500 watt power supply I can see Vega being a bit of a problem uh, because you might need to actually upgrade to a higher end uh, power supply if you want to have a high end Vega card. And with something like the GTX 1080 out there, which is firmly holding an advantage in power consumption and temperatures, I think the only way that AMD can really get a win out of this generation is to price it lower than the GTX 1080. And I guess the only way they can do that is if they make RX Vega price around about the GTX 1070 and that's the way that I think Vega can succeed because when you have uh, you know 20% increase in performance for a cheaper price you're obviously going to get people who are going to switch just because they want that more performance and they don't really care about power draw and things like that. Um, we also have rumors like the bits and chips tweets which say that RX Vega will have an excellent price to performance ratio better than the RX 480 did so that kind of makes me think that they'll price it around GTX 1070 territory, try and steal some market share through that by offering a huge performance increase over the GTX 1070. The only problem with this is that sooner or later Volta is going to come out and it's going to compete with the Vega line and there's just no way that Vega can compete on the performance front with Volta which is Nvidia's new generation. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Um, when we get more news on Vega, I'll keep you guys informed. I'll make another video. Until then, we probably won't have any more news until SIGGRAPH 2017, which is 31st of July. So as always, subscribe to the channel to get more updates just like this video. Uh, if you liked this video and you enjoyed it, then like it. And links are in the description to support us. And I'll catch you guys next time.